Hello, my name is Sharon Hurst. Welcome back to my studio. I thought we would try something a little different. Wet into wet with watercolour should be so easy, shouldn't it? It's watercolour and you use water and it's wet and it ought to just all blend away and be beautiful. And isn't that the one thing that we all have the big trouble with? Oh, don't we ever. If we all know that moment when you have put paint on the paper and you're watching it drying and you're thinking, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? It's that moment of, ah! that's the moment that we're going to try and avoid with this bit of video. And we do that by laying water in first. We're going to paint a line of trees and we'll deal with a bit of perspective as well from close to far. And this particular video, I want to show you how to double load and then even treble load. And you could, if you want to, go away and even put four colours on your brush. But this is the technique that we need to do this. It's not as scary as it sounds. And we just have to be brave and go for it and try it. But with this particular technique, it will help you to become a better watercolourist. Absolutely, it will cross my heart. It's just a case of how much water, how much paint. So have a go with me and see what you think. And of course, we'd all love to see your results afterwards. So don't forget to send them to me. You can always get to me through the website. That's sharonhurst.co.uk. But let's have a go. Come on, let's try. Here we are, everybody. Imagine this is the foreshore of a lake. Um, water here, perhaps, but I wanted the sandy edge of water, whether that's a beach, whatever it is, but it gives us some kind of idea and a perspective because we're wider here as it's closer to us going off into the distance. I wanted that to be dry so that work that I'm going to do now doesn't run down into it. And we're going to lay in a line of trees. I've quite deliberately, um, my water's dirty, and I've done that because I thought that maybe it might mean that you can see where I'm going to uh, paint with it. It might give you an idea. Let's see. I've got really dirty green water here. Let's see what, what we can achieve with it. I want to bring a line of water along this foreshore. Smaller as it goes away from me, but imagine you're not going right up into the tops of the trees we're going to come just a couple of millimeters lower than where the trees would be so through here well, it's not water, not dirty enough is it just a minute let's get some green paint in it right so you can see where i'm going you would do this with clear water but i'm going to paint along there like that with water i'm not coming down to the sand and as I say, I'm not going to go right up into where I want the tops of the trees to be. So that needs to go along there and it needs to be good and wet, okay? Not sodden and not running, but I want it to be wet. And I'm going to now double and even treble load my brush maybe. Let's see how we go. I've chosen really quite deliberately out there paints and colours because that way you'll see what I'm doing. I want to go into this cadmium orange, okay? And then I'm turning my brush over, and then on the other side, I'm going to come into this sap green. It's going to make a mess of our palette, can't help that, it's bad luck. And I've made this sludgy sort of bluey gray by using, this is um, Prussian blue, and I've mixed it with burnt umber. So I'm going to turn my brush this side on and have some of that. I've got all three colours on my brush. And I'm going to hold my brush quite far. I'm going to come out just a little bit so that you can see my hand. I'm going to come quite far up the handle and hold it like this. 
and now I want to come just above my waterline and I'm going to scumble and roll and tweak and twiddle just above it because then that will give me a hard edge of my trees. Now I need control as I come through here so I've got to come down the ferrule and now I'm going to work it like this. Right, it's all rather green so what I want to do now is rinse and dab my brush and come back into the dark colour and I'm going to just drop that hither and yon into my trees. Rinse and dab and then if I come in underneath the edge of that that takes away the hard edge. This is that blend stroke that we've been dealing with. Like that. And I think, you know, green and, and orange, um, green and red are, are colours that really, really work together. So if I come into my palette and I take some, this is Burnt Sienna. I do that I'm happy with that rinse and dab now it's all still damp and we're waiting waiting because I want it to be damp but I don't want it to be runny particularly and this is my rigger brush rigger brush and I want to use the dark dark color that I had here and just pick up some of the edge of it don't want it dark too dark and I'm going to run that up through the trees and because it all becomes quite misty and it fades because it's all still so wet that will make this look as though they are a long way away they're further back in the forest it's just what I want try to come above so that I'm not in your way tree trunks are getting smaller closer together as we work through this part. They will become paler too. So let's see, oh, that's still lovely and wet there. So let's just work a few through there, like that. Can you see where I'm going with this, everybody? Can you see what I'm doing? That's it. Now it's drying, it's still drying, it's still drying and it's all down to the timing because I want to wait until the shine goes off the paper and now the paper becomes just damp and that means that when I go back in with colour it stays there, it doesn't bleed as much. I can use my colour a little more, thi a little th thicker it's thicker colour now. I'm going into the main part of the paint and my trunks need to be wider down at the base. Thinner as you come up. Wherever you put this brush first is going to be the biggest splodge. So don't paint your trees down because branches aren't thick at the top and thin at the bottom. It's the other way around. We need them to be thick up to thin. It's looking like the Charles Elysee, isn't it? Actually, thicker down here. I'm quite cack handed doing this because I'm, I'm doing it trying to stay out of the camera's way so that you can see what I'm doing. And it's awkward. Smaller as we get further away, paler. So almost nothing down there that pushes it into the distance. This one's a bit thick, don't like that, so I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to dab it to get rid of a lot of the wet on it. I just want to come in there and soften some of that. Now the other thing that you can do, which is really quite classy, here we're going with a damp brush. Now it's wet but I haven't got drips, there's no drip on the ferrule, I don't want all that extra water because if I come in here now, it's damp and I come in with water, it should push the paint away 
and we should be able to see some ghost trees. I don't know if you can see that, everyone. Yeah, just about. I think I've missed my chance now. It's drying too much. I've got lots of lights on in here and the light is drying. Oh, we've got a bit of... Um, this is the cauliflower stage. This is, I'm deliberately making cauliflowers with the water. This is what's going on here. So if you wanted to kind of do another layer of shrubbery, you could drop water in there and it will blossom and bloom and you would get more cauliflowers. I've missed the boat because it's now too dry. But what I can do is come in with this dark and I think that I'd like to add a little bit more brown to that so that it's not solidly blue. And then I'm going to bring my trees just a little forward so that I've got some closer to me on the beach. And we could just run a few branches up through the canopy like this. They're going to be thicker, wider, because they're closer. And I just want a few, I don't want too many. Because if I make those too dark, it will bring all of this closer to me. And I don't want it to be. I want to push it away. And you do that by making it pale and pasty and not so defined. Some of the branches might come up above the canopy through here. So you could do a bit of that if you wanted to. Using just the tip of your rigger brush. Like that. And then all I would do simply with this, don't like the way these are stumpy on the soil, I need to take a, a, a harsh brush, a hard brush, a brush that's going to scrub a bit at what I've got there. And the ideal brush for that is, a, is something like a flat brush. And mine, of course, is miles away. Let's grab it quickly. And if I use a flat brush like this, this is my coma so called because it's it's cut in the top like this to look like a cone i want to wet that and again just get rid of any extra liquid on there and if i just snuggle that along the top of my sand line here mix the colors mix it into the sand like that And that grounds all my trees. The way this bleeds here is lovely. That's just what you want. You can encourage that a little bit if you want to. Like that. And I can just pull it through. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I would double and triple load my brush to create a tree line in the dis going into the distance. Use it for hedgerows. In there, you could just imagine that being a walkway in a park, couldn't you, maybe? Imagine that's all up to you, your imagination. What would it be for you?